Turn in your King James Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. The question comes up. Why I get people to doubt their salvation? If you're doing this and you're not repenting, repenting, there's no chastening in your life, then you're probably not saved. Have you ever heard me say stuff like that? Oh, Denlinger's all about works. He's backloading works salvation. He's a lordship salvationist. He's a this, he's a that. I'm going to address that in this little mini study here. It's not going to be a real long one because it doesn't need to be. Um, why do I do this? Why do I say, check yourself. You're not right with God. You're probably not saved. Why? Um, because number one, it's in the Bible. And Paul did it. The Apostle Paul did it. Why? Because he was trying to make sure people didn't go to hell when they died. That's what I'm doing. You'll never hear me say, if you don't do such and such, you're lost and you can't get saved. You won't hear that. Um, I always want to point people to Jesus Christ and make sure that they're saved. I'm going to show you the scriptures for this. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. We'll start in verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Now what is that? Examine yourself, whether you're in the faith. Is that, you know, doubting your salvation? Paul saying, hey, I, I don't know if you're really saved. Examine yourself, whether ye you be in the faith. Why was he doing that? Well, we'll see as we continue here, but right there you have it. Okay, Paul was writing letters to people. He couldn't always be in contact with people. And sometimes, you know, he's going and he's leaving. He thinks, okay, I got the people, the, the believers at Corinth, they're settled, they're good. And he goes away and all of a sudden he hears all these reports. One's committing fornication with his father's wife. Huh? The church I helped to found over there? What? They're doing what? And all these lost people are coming back and they're laughing about these Christians in Corinth. And he's thinking... Huh? And so Paul's having to write letters to rebuke them. Well, here we are in the 21st century. Um, I write letters back and forth with people, um, but I also deal with YouTube type of things. And there's sometimes I can't deal with somebody face to face. And so I just have to be sharp. I have to rebuke sharply. Why? Because I hate people and I want to I just, I want to have my, build my cult empire. And I just want to have my little group of Denlingerites that surround me and, and kiss my feet as I walk by. No, because I want to see people get saved. I was a false con convert for a long time, right? 25, 26 years, I think it was. I always forget the exact day and everything else there. But, you know, I remember the basic time period when I came to the Lord totally broken and said, okay, Lord, I don't think I'm saved. Uh, I just, I don't have anything. I can't relate to the people in the, in the Bible. Uh, I really am afraid. I, I don't know if I'm going to go to heaven or hell. I need to know for sure. And I'm going to get down here on my knees and I'm going to, I'm going to cry out to you and God, please save me. I'm a wicked, vile, filthy sinner. And the Lord saved me and called me into the ministry. And people could say, well, you were saved. You just were out of fellowship. Uh, don't tell me about my salvation. Okay, my little Sunday school confession that I originally had made and, and I believe Jesus died for my sins and the whole thing, uh, it was false. Okay, it was completely false. I know, okay, it was my life. I know what I was doing as a false Christian, right? I know how I was faking things, going to church and faking, you know, and how oh, hello and hi and, you know. Yeah, I was a fraud. I was fake. I came to the Lord broken, all those years later, and the Lord saved me. So now that I know what it's like to be a false Christian and what it's like to genuinely be born, born again, where the Lord saved me, I don't save myself by my prayer, my belief, my feelings or whatever else. God saved me, and I know that he saved me now, and I have an assurance of salvation. But you know what? There's still times that I say, okay, examine yourself, Brian. There's wicked thoughts come into my mind and I start to question things and I start and I say, okay, stop. Examine myself. Am I in the faith? Yes, I am. I remember how the Lord saved me and I remember this and I remember that. The Lord showed me things and done things with this ministry and whatever else. Okay, yeah, I'm saved. So it's not some kind of a sin for me to say to somebody, I don't know if you're saved. 
Paul is doing it to the Corinthians right there. So a lot of people condemn me and they say, oh, Denling is a heretic. He's a lordship salvationist, work salvationist, whatever else, because I say, I don't know if you're saved. If you're doing this, if you're saying this, if you're believing that, if you're not submitting to what the Bible says, I don't know if you're saved. Examine yourself whether you're in the faith. It doesn't make me a heretic for doing that to people. That makes me a Bible-believing preacher in the same line as what Paul did to the Corinthians. And why do you do it? Let's continue. Verse 6. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Look at our lives. Look at the, look at the sanctification that the Lord has in my life. Okay? I literally met a guy today in the grocery store that said, I've seen your truck out with the bumper magnets on it and everything else. And he said, are you saved? Are you a Christian? And we had a good time of fellowship right in the grocery store. A man, I just met him today and he knows I'm not a reprobate because of the way I live. That doesn't, I've never said I'm sinlessly perfect either, so I get that one thrown at me. I've preached against sinless perfection, which is weird that people would try to put it on me then. Verse 7, Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. He's saying, you need to do no evil here. Don't, don't be messing around in the sin all the time. Why? Because it's, that's the way it's, it's good for you. I mean, what, what sin is there that really helps you in life? <laughs> Another thing I've always been just blown away by. But he says here, though we be as reprobates. See, they're turning on him. False prophets, if you understand what happens with the Corinthians, you study 1 Corinthians, you study 2 Corinthians. False prophets are coming in and they're messing with them and saying, hey, Paul's false and Paul's doing this. And they're backstabbing Paul. To, to turn the Corinthian believers against him. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Happens to me all the time. People stab me in the back and whatever else and try to destroy this ministry. They got whole Facebook pages, you know, dedicated to, to my overthrow. You know, there's people that, that uh, dedicate their whole time, you know, all their time on YouTube and whatever else. Just hours and hours and hours of, of time. I, I heard one guy did an eight-hour live stream dedicated to attacking me. Nobody's worth that much time, myself included. It's insane. But what are they trying to do? They're trying to say that I'm a reprobate. He's false. Don't listen to Denlinger. He's a crazy nut. He's this, he's that. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. I can't do anything against the truth. The truth is there. You hear me mess up. You hear me say something that's wrong. Well, okay, Brian's wrong on that point. I have to disagree with him on that point. Okay, it doesn't make me some kind of lost reprobate. Verse 9, For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong, and this also we wish, even your perfection. That's what I want. Hey, you mess around with false doctrine, you mess around with bad other things, spiritual problems where I question your salvation, I try to get you to think and examine yourself. You know what I really want? I want your perfection. My worst enemies online. My worst enemies out there in public, I want to see them get saved. And I want to see that life of sanctification. I want to see them clean up their life, get victory over sin. But how can I do that if I'm a little wee-wee preacher? We all struggle with sin. And we all just, you know, and I'm not going to judge you because I can't, I'm not in your situation. And so we should do this and we should do that. No, I'm going to tell you the things the Lord has helped me to get victory over in my life so that you can get the victory over it too. I'm not going to say we all struggle with pornography. We don't anymore. I don't anymore. I know how to get out of it. I know how to overcome that, how to get victory over that, and I'm going to tell you how to do it. I've preached about it. You see? Oh, well, you're judging me because I have a, a problem looking at things and, and whatever. Yes, I am judging you, right? Because I removed the uh, little beam out of my own eye or mode out of my own eye there so I can remove yours. I can tell you. I can help you. My desire is for your perfection. That's why I want you to examine yourself, whether you're in the faith. And I've met with people, by the way, just say this, I've met with people, I can see all kinds of sins, and if they're there to study the King James Bible, I mean, the, the way that they're dressed, the way I can smell smoke on them, cigarette smoke on them, whatever, I see all kinds of stuff. But if they're there to talk to me about the Bible, that's as far as it goes. I'm not going to say to them, um, 
you're dressed immodestly, ma'am. I'm not going to talk to you. I don't like the way you're doing this. And I don't, you know, you have this and you have that. And I just saw you have a cell phone. So you're going to hell. And I don't say that stuff. But see, when I'm dealing with people online, I have no idea who I'm dealing with. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm talking to people in comments. I don't even know if it's their real picture or whatever else. Some of you write to me. I've met some of you. But what do I do? I have to preach God's standards without compromise. And I have to preach hard against sin. And let the chips fall where they may. Verse 10. Therefore I write these things being absent. I'm not sitting in your living room right now or wherever you have your computer at. Lest being at present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. Why do I question people's salvation? Why do I get people to doubt their salvation by saying, if you're doing these sins, maybe you're not even saved. Why do I do that? Because I'm trying to edify people. I'm trying to get you to examine yourself, whether you're in the faith. Why? Because I can't physically deal with you. You see? That's the bad thing about online ministry. I'm not able to physically deal with you. Hey, you come to the area here? I meet you out at a store or wherever else? Great. Let's sit down and talk. You know, I meet somebody and, they, and they're, they smell like cigarettes or something. Well, that's a problem. You shouldn't be smoking as a Christian. But how long have you been saved? How long have you been smoking? How long are, are you trying to get victory over this? Is there chastening in your life? I need to know a whole list of things before I can judge in that area. And I'm not going to just write out, boom, because I smell cigarettes. But what do I do when I'm online? What did Paul do when he was writing through letters, like we just read there? He had to use harshness. He had to, what's it say here? Um, that's being present, I should use sharpness. He has to, to um, write some things there a little bit boldly, a little bit, you know, his letters, they say, are, are weighty and powerful. <laughs> you know, yeah, he had to because he can't be there in, in person. Why? For their edification. Examine yourself. Make sure you're saved. Make sure you're not a false convert like I once was. You know, I got rebuked a couple times by born-again believers in the past when I was a false convert. And there were times it made me really mad. I got really angry. But you know what? I never forgot those people. I never forgot those people that I back then called self-righteous. Oh, you're judging me. You a hypocrite. You this, you that. Like a lot of you people treat me today. But I never forgot those people. And someday when I meet them in heaven, I'm going to walk up to them and I'm going to shake their hand and say, thank you for rebuking my sin. Thank you. I was wrong in what I was doing and you saw it and you had the guts to come out and tell me I was wrong. The Lord saved me and uh, that's what he's called me to do with a lot of people's sin out there. Turn to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. We'll see the thing here again of Paul questioning their salvation to make them think. Again, that's what I do. Galatians chapter 4, verse 11. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. I think I might have wasted my time on you. I don't think you're even saved. Let's keep reading. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Say a whole bunch of stuff on that, but you know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first, and my temptation which was in my flesh ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. You you know a lot of times I've I've preached to people and they, they you know they really it gets I don't want people worshiping me, but they really appreciate what I have to say and oh brother Brian man this is a great sermon and whatever else. You know, and, and they see the infirmities of my flesh. They see me stumbling over the text sometimes and I'm not, don't say things correctly or I mess up some of my facts or statistics or whatever. And they go, well, praise the Lord. I know Brother Brian, he's great. But then I step on their toes. Then I say that thing that ticks them off. And all of a sudden it goes from Brother Brian to Denlinger's a heretic. I used to be a Denlingerite. I've come out of the Denlingerite cult. Mm-hmm. Um, verse 15, where is then the blessedness ye spake of? 
For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And I tell people the truth. I say some things that, are, that seem to be harsh or critical or whatever else. Yeah, that's what I do. And people get mad about it. And no longer, it's no longer blessed Brian, it's now heretic Brian. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you, that ye might affect them. Talking about false prophets coming in, just like they did with the Corinthians. You know. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Get a hold of that one. My little children. I think I've led you to the Lord. Spiritually, when you lead somebody to the Lord, they're like a little child to you. Okay? Of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Paul's saying, I'm treating you like brethren. I, I think that you're saved. I, I'm hoping, but I'm kind of travailing in birth again. Did it really take? You say, how do you know? Look at the next verse, verse 20. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. And I've seen that thing. It is heartbreaking. I've seen it many times. Somebody seems to be doing really good, and all of a sudden, pew, off they go. Listen to some false prophet attacking me that's just twisting my words. I mean, you can, I could make a fool out of myself if I wanted to with some of the things I've said. And you, Will you contradict yourself here? Or you say this or that. What's the context of what I'm saying? Let me explain myself. And these heretics never let me do that. Okay, um, I've, I've offered many times any heretic out there that obsessively watches everything I say and whatever else, and you make all your little exp expose videos, send me a letter to my post office. You can even do registered or whatever to make sure I got it. So you can show the proof I got it, and then you, know, then you can expose me for not answering or something. Any heretic out there, write down your main points against me, send it to me, and I'll do a video on it. Simple. Okay, I can't do the little comment battles back and forth, back and forth. I used to spend a lot of time with that. I used to do emailing and I would literally spend four or five hours in the morning doing emails. And then it's, oh, when am I going to get time to, to fulfill all my other duties and things around the house and, and uh, actually, you know, do studies in the scriptures and, and actually write to people who want answers. Um, because a lot of times the email stuff was just people wasting my time. Uh, I have dealt with that many times in the past, uh, where people just, they don't really want an answer, they just want to argue. I'm um, not going to waste my time on that. But that's why I don't email. You want to send me a letter? Send me something through the post office. I'll get back to you when I can. It's not always going to be very quick. But again, what's the point of this video? The point of this video is the reason I will call people's salvation into question, the reason I will say, if you you know, believe such and such way, you're probably not saved. It's because I'm trying to get people to examine themselves. I'm standing in doubt of them because of this thing that they're messing around with. I stand in doubt of you. But I want you to examine yourself to make sure that you're in the faith. Because you, I could be dealing with a false convert. Again, in person, there's all kinds of other things that I can see. I can look at their body language. I can look at, okay... Look at me in the eyes here. Are you making eye contact with me? You know, is your, you give me a firm handshake. Are you telling me the truth? Am I seeing the eyes darting back and forth like liars will do? You know, I'm going to talk to you. You know, talk to me. Say things to me, whatever else. How are they dressed? Other things, you know, indicators, a guy standing there with a Bud Light t-shirt on or something and and smoking a cigarette, and he's telling me how much he loves the Lord and he reads his King James Bible every day, I'm going to say, okay, um, how long have you been saved, sir? Oh, saved? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, saved, yeah. yeah. I'm going to say, um, so you know for sure that you're going to go to heaven when you die. Do you have assurance of salvation? I'm going to go through some questions. But the vast majority of people I meet in person, they say, hey, praise the Lord for the, your bumper magnets. I say, oh, are you born again? And they say, yes, I am. I said, well, praise the Lord. Hey, it's nice to meet you, you know, if, we're, if I can't stand there and talk for a while. I don't say, well, let me go down through the list. Do you drink herbal tea? You know, no. Oh, you don't. Oh, okay. You're probably not saved. I don't do that. But when I'm dealing online with people, 
I don't know what I'm hitting. <laughs> you know, I don't know what I'm getting. And so what I have to do is I have to get people to examine themselves. And I do that by rebuking certain sins very harshly. So, and the herbal tea thing, by the way, was actually brought out against me. Somebody actually said that, you know, that I, you know, said certain things about if you don't drink herbal tea or natural health, whatever else stuff, whatever else. They took it to the herbal tea thing. But I said, if somebody's claiming to be saved and they, they attack the thing of natural healing and God's system of, of health, then I question their salvation. And I do. Okay. And again, again, in person, would I say that to somebody? Well, I'm going to have to sit down and talk to them and get to know that person before I'm going to make that kind of a judgment call. Online, what can I do? All I can do is just fire out there into YouTube world, into internet world, and if I hit you and you're a false convert, hopefully you'll examine yourself. Hopefully I can introduce a little bit of doubt into your mind to make you wake up and say, okay, let me think about what this guy has said. Maybe I am false. Maybe I don't really know that Jesus Christ is my Savior. You know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to actually consider a few things. And I'm going to go look at the Scriptures. I want to look at what this guy said. I'm going to look into what he's saying here. Oh, he's, what he said is false. Okay, in this study he did, this rebuking of this certain sin and whatever else. Okay, but you know what? I am saved. I know I'm saved. I've examined myself. I know I'm born again. I know the Lord's been there and, and whatever. Good. Then I've done my job. Um, <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. Just I don't, I don't think I've ever explained it that way before, um, why I do that occasionally. Um, because quite frankly, I'll, I'll just tell you this, I do believe that there are people, um, not all of them, but I do believe that there are some enemies out there that I have, whatever, that, that are born again that they're saved. You look at their testimony. I, I did kind of talk about that in one of my videos. Their testimony is right, but the things that they preach and teach right now is messed up. So if your testimony is right, but you're preaching false doctrine and there's chastening there, well, okay. Um, there's a good chance that that person is saved if there's chastening. Uh, no chastening and the wrong gospel and the wrong Bible and the wrong whatever, well, okay, then we have a problem. But again, my worst enemy, um, examine yourself. Uh, if I put things into your mind that you start to have some doubts, please examine yourself. I desire your perfection. Um, we all should desire to be perfect before the Lord, to be using the right Bible, to get victory over sin, that life of sanctification, the new life that is in Christ Jesus. And that's what most people fight me on. They don't want that new life. They want to have the New Age gospel belief only. I believe what the Bible says, therefore I am saved. I believe, therefore I am. <laughs> you know, it's New Age. It's straight from the New Age occult system that these people believe. You say, what do you believe, Brian? Well, you got to believe what the Bible says, certainly, but uh, you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, and it's up to God to save you. I mean, there's a, there's a real deep concept there, I know. Very difficult for some of the people out there, these false prophets. Um, it actually has to be God that saves you. You need to actually be in contact with God. Okay? And they can do it through your intellect. You know, sit cross-legged and, you know, do the, the thing, uh, you know, whatever. And you can, your belief, you can connect to the God of the universe through your belief, your intellect. Uh, no, I think you have to actually do what the Bible says and call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Call because of your belief very easy. So that's going to be it. Just wanted to explain that. Um, so it, it, some people aren't going to get it. Some people are just going to still cast out my name as evil. I'm blessed early on and now I'm a heretic. Uh, it happened to Paul. And uh, as you get older in the faith, it'll happen to you. Um, you study the Bible more and you'll sit down and you'll talk to people that profess to be Christians and they'll at first, it'll be, wow, this is really neat. I'm really enjoying this Bible study. And then you'll step on the wrong toe and it'll be, and you'll see their countenance change and then everything will go haywire after that. <laughs> it is just what it is. So please be encouraged, brethren, to stand for the truth. Um, please do keep us in your prayers because we do get attacked a lot. And uh, I'm kind of getting weird, I guess. I'm, I'm kind of enjoying the attacks as time goes by. 
kind of feel a little bit like there's something missing in my life if people aren't attacking me. <laughs> but uh, going to be coming out a lot more studies, um, doing some uh, sermon notes and things right now for some other sermons in the future. Um, if you saw my earlier video with all the books that the brother sent me, we get a lot of books coming in and things and, and you know, stuff that people sends us and send us. And um, so we'll see some big plans for the future. So please do keep us in your prayers. Thanks to all that support us. We really do appreciate that. See you in future videos. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.